So what's up everyone? So today what I have in store for you is a little bit of an install, a little bit of product review. I need brakes. So what I'm going to be doing is comparing the stock brakes on some new tires compared to my uh, my new brakes, which are going to be the Akabona Street Performance Pads. I was originally going to get stop techs, but I could get the Akabonos local, which appeals to me and they don't seem like that bad of a pad. So I'm going to show you a comparison when I get around to doing it. But for right now, let's do a uh, 60 to zero test. So as long as I get to 60, let's go. So what I'm going to do is when I get to my marker, I'm going to push in the clutch. fucking cold so on the stock brakes we got 81.2 feet that's pretty good actually because if you look at uh like the factory test it's supposed to be 109 feet i believe so i mean this is a crappy harbor freight measure wheel but i did check it before it is consistent so even if it's not accurate as far as the actual measurement goes we have a baseline so what's going to happen is i'm going to do a couple things so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a couple things i'm going to replace the pads because the rotors are actually awesome there's no run out of, well there's minimal run out on them they're not warped at all so pretty cool on that definitely helps out the cost but i'm definitely going to see how these performance pads work and they're not stop techs which are supposed to be pretty up their name but i was figuring they cost about the same i get them a little bit faster and uh Akbons are a good name and it appealed to me that they are the factory uh factory manufacturer of the factory pads so we're gonna see what the comparison is on that the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gravity bleed the brakes. So, you know, it's something that gets looked over a lot. So, but if you were to look at like new fluid compared to the fluid that's in there right now, definitely needs to be changed. You can see the discoloration in it. Definitely would not hurt. Gravity bleeding is a slow process, but it works pretty darn well. So, we're going to get back to the garage started all right so as you can tell i already have all the wheels off just to begin as always don't forget to pop the master cylinder cap and as you can see i was talking about how i was getting a little old you can see right there that color and then this is brand spanking fresh basically so side by side definitely a color difference could definitely use it. I believe the service interval is like, what, 60,000, 50,000, something like that. So, and I'm just about at 60. So, definitely time to do it. So, let's get started. I'm not going to explain everything because they're brakes. There's 101 to 1,001 tutorials on how to do brakes, and a lot of them are probably better how I can explain it. So, I'm just going to get through it show you a little bit here and there and then uh, we'll get right back to it also this thing's a lifesaver Here are the stock pads. They're not too bad, but definitely worth replacing. They're about at, I want to give them 60 to 70 percent worn. So, overall, not bad. Here are the new Akabonos, though. So, yeah, of course, a lot more depth, kind of shiny. You saw the one bagging plate fall off. So, 
This one looks to be a little bit more secure, a little bit thicker. Not bad. One thing I do like about the new ones are though, if you know anything about brakes a little bit, you would see, let me see if I can get you a better. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a lot more copper in this one than to the new one. So that means more actual friction material and less dissipating heat to warp the rotors. So, I mean, some people can argue with me on that and I mean, that's just what I've seen overall. But uh, I think I'll be happy with these. I really do hope so at least. So let's uh, get them on now. And uh, of course, always take the time to grease the pins. Also, always a good idea to replace the hardware because I mean, you might as well. These don't look too great. They're all rusty and stuff like that. If you don't want to get the new ones, take a wire wheel to it, grease them up, just slap them in, call it a day. But yeah, that's just my two cents. So change of plans. I had to clean these off because the guy at the auto parts store gave me the wrong one because hardware kit because that's just my luck. <sighs> People like seeing me suffer. <laughs> Real quick tip here, um, I already put the one slide pin in, you'll notice that one is just normal without a bushing and one has a bushing. On this particular one, I think it differs between which and whatever models, but on the Civic SI 2013 9 Gen, the one with the bushing will go on top. So got the pads in, almost all the hardware in. About to compress the piston, go and grease this up, put it in real quick, and then we'll be done with this side, and then we'll move on to the next, and then move on to the back. Zap's here. I need to finish my work. No. Yeah, anyway, all the pads are done. So, now we're going to bleed the system. I'm going to get, oh my god, look how much of it's in there. <laughs> I'm going to uh, siphon, don't touch it, and don't get on my paint. It'll take the paint off. Like 100%. <laughs> oh, I would kick your ass so hard. I'm gonna go smiley face with that. No. And then I'll just eat at your paint and you'll have a rusty smiley face in your car. I'm surprised it didn't fucking overspill. Jesus Christ. Maybe you did. Maybe you should eat your paint. Oh, I just put this fucking thing here. Alright. Anyway, so now we're gonna bleed it. Real simple. Open the cap up. Get all the old fluid out there as much as you can. Then... Cut it. Yeah, cut it. Start bleeding. Then you're going to go from normal bleeding process, farthest away from the master cylinder. Hook up your uh, clear line, all that kind of stuff. Loosen up the bleeder. And then... Uh, the bleeder. Yeah, the bleeder. And then just keep an eye on the reservoir. Make sure that it... Uh, uh, what do you call it? comes out alright, doesn't get filled with air, and then we're good to go. Alright, so what's up everyone? Sorry, I'm a little sick. <laughs> so it's been a couple weeks now. I did the break-in period for the brakes, which usually for any performance brakes is like go to 50 or 60 miles an hour apply 80% brake pressure to a near stop and do that about 15 10 to 15 times so I did that <clears throat> probably more than I should have <laughs> but um overall first impressions of these brakes are they're a bit more bitey than the originals which is what I was hoping for so that's kind of nice so I'm on my way to check out the braking test so the big thing with braking tests as far as stopping distance goes tires are probably like the biggest factor in that because if you can't get the traction you can't stop better so i mean these aren't like supposed to be like great performance pads they're not supposed to be like high-end type shit right so <clears throat> i'm guessing around six feet but overall that's still better the feel of the pads is what i was really looking for and the performance too there's also a lot less brake fade so overall 
it would be a good buy in my opinion. That motherfucker right there, you stupid bitch. You can't go out of the left turn lane. You're committed. Anyway. So, I'm on my way. Let's do the braking test and then we'll see. Let me know how you guys feel about the pad. 